gamers, gals, and my non-binary pals, welcome to the greatest tier list of all time, aka the first one I found off of off of uh, Google Images. So we had a nice little ban list, but you know, there were a couple changes. Some decks got better, some decks got a lot worse. I'm here to bring you the sauce on what I think is gonna be the best decks going into the new format is. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the sauce. But first, this video was brought to you guys by Imperium Duelist. Imperium makes some of the best Yu-Gi-Oh accessories and apparel, full stop. In fact, I religiously used their Cherubim Oversleeves for over a year at one point. And speaking of accessories, we've come together to create the hopping around playmat. You're all my little drama frogs and I wanted to create a piece of art that is actually some form of usable merch. It comes in two colors, monochrome and hot pink, which is my favorite color by the way, and I am in love with how they turned out, both the single and two player variants. Pick up a playmat, be sure to use my code Stevie10 on all products for their site for a 10% off discount and be sure to tag us when yours comes in. First up, we got Voiceless Voice. This is the definition of just a deck that you could really tell Konami was like, yeah, we're just gonna make this good. There is no possible way that this deck could ever be bad in any capacity. One card starter, uh, super consistent engines, and pre-prep, and, and Safira and barrier, tons of protection, tons of interruption. It, it, this deck is so ignorant sometimes in how it plays, how it sets up. It just does so much and it doesn't even lose the hand traps. Sometimes you could stop it with like one fucking Ash Blossom and the other times like you could have like four hand traps and it just will like play through it if they open well enough. It's crazy. Plus the branded fusion stuff. Have you read Jalgen? Light Spellcaster? Protected by Barrier? Hold up. I mean, you're gonna have to be very hard pressed to tell me why this isn't like a tier one deck. Plus the additional support that's getting later on. Oh my God, that shit's saucy. Next up, we have Centurion. I mean, Centurion's getting a little bit of support. You know, it's cute. It does the job. The main problem is with Centurion is what I call the hot red litmus test. Now, a lot of decks, if you may remember things like Super Heavy Samurai or Manadium, they will invest a billion resources into some dumbass fuck ass boss monster whether it be engine pieces or bricks or combo lines or whatever they will do their absolute best to end on something super silly like spell cancel or a hot red dragon archfiend abyss or some silly little ftk card if a dex payoff isn't better than a hot red dragon archfiend abyss it is not a good deck or it's not a good engine this is why i think decks whose whole purpose is to like summon a colossus or summon a protos those decks aren't very good unless it were in a very low powered format like sword soul was very very good because protos in a low powered format that shit was like ftk but we are in a very 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 fast high paced format and as fucked up as it is to say Hot Red doesn't win games. Hot Red, unfortunately, just isn't good enough to win games on its own. It's just not strong enough. And yeah, unfortunately, this deck's one purpose is to make a dumbass, fuck-ass floodgate. We've got Hero. Don't play this deck. You want to lose to Nibiru? If you want to lose to Nibiru in a format where everyone and their mom is main decking five trillion hand traps plus Nibiru in a deck that can't even set up a single Omni negate for insulation or protection, like, sure, bro, be my fucking guest. But I'm sorry, if you if if you hand me a hero deck, I will have to ask you to leave the premises. Next up, we got Baritzess. Hear me out, chat. I think this deck's not that bad. <laughs> I think this deck's actually kind of decent. This deck does have issues in terms of its boss monsters not really being that good <laughs> in the grand scheme of things like when you compare a fire king end board to a marincess end board it looks like fucking night and day but having a big fuck ass towers is surprisingly good i mean just look at raid raptor i don't think this deck is like crazy good but i do think that of all the build a towers decks Princess is definitely the best one. It's got a ton of card draw. It's extremely consistent. It's very resilient to hand traps. Have you read fucking Marincess Wave? That shit's like insane. One card starters. It just does it all. Oh, by the way, goes in match is also the most like AIDS card ever imagined. So if you open like a goes in match plus stealth Craig in hand, you're putting your opponent in the fucking infinite Tsukiyomi of like mental trauma. So I think Princess pretty good at tier two. Now we have Brandon. Oh my god. Ah, uh, I hate to say it. Branded is fucking dog shit, bro. You guys thought this was a Stevie Blunder video if we're not dog if we're not fucking dogging on Branded? Hell no, this deck ain't good. The main problem with Branded is like you still lose the hand traps, you know? Branded is an amazing anti-meta deck 
for exactly Fire King. Okay. Is Punk on this tier list? Uh, it's probably dog shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, why play a four card combo that can FTK your opponent when you can play a one card combo that FTKs your opponent? The main problem with Branded is that it is a very targeted deck. This is the definition of like an anti-meta deck. I mean, outside of the 50 anti-meta decks that are on here, but that's not the point. <laughs> the point is, is that Branded's entire purpose is to either make a fuck-ass floodgate, which I mean, sure, man, you can do it. But if you want to make a degen board, you might as well just be playing a stun deck, or you might as well just be playing Voiceless Branded, you know, an actually good Branded deck. And the second thing is that Branded doesn't really, quote-unquote, hard counter or beat anything outside of like exactly fire king like don't get me wrong i think that fire king and whatever all that sort of stuff is still extremely good and it's gonna see a ton of play you know what we're just gonna fucking cut to the chase right now i still think both versions of fire both the pure variants and this they're both probably still tier zero fire format it's not gonna be tier zero probably like tier like 1.5 these decks are definitely fucking gonna see just a shit ton of representation and i think that brandon might see some play just to try and continually counter it the way this meta game is sort of shaping up to be a lot of people are starting to shift away from playing fire decks and trying to play anti-fire decks that also have decent matchups versus the rest of the metagame. And a lot of those decks, Brandon unfortunately just doesn't do extremely well against. Like, what the fuck is Brandon supposed to do into like, burn? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, like, what is it supposed to do? But yeah, I think Brandon at best, maybe tier two. Speaking of <laughs> not amazing decks, you know, Speedroid, don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, piss boy, but this deck is so fucking cheeks. Lose the hand traps. Lose in a Nibiru. No real end board. Double Crystal Wing, unfortunately, is not an end board in this format. <laughs> if Fire King can end on two negates with their left nut, I don't think spending five cards in your hand to end on two negates is exactly the wave. Speaking of decks that aren't worth it, Labyrinth. This feels so fucking bad. Labyrinth before the Fire King structure came out, or when rollback was legal. Oh my god. Holy shit. I wanted to fucking lick the sweat out of fucking Lovely's armpits like there was no fucking tomorrow. And then good cards came out, and this shit became so ass. The main problem with Labyrinth is that Labyrinth has such a horrible fire matchup, because everything Labyrinth does is like destroy and stuff like that as well as it needs like turns to set up and it loses to like Kira non-targeting pops and blah 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 you have to build labyrinth in such a specific greedy way and you may be seeing that a lot in blind second lists you know decks that are playing like triple Arius and like a bunch of daruma cannons and like terrors of the overroot or like ddg a lot of these extremely like just sacky labyrinth lists now while these decks can see success and we have seen them i mean they have topped regionals and like ots championships for what that's worth as a fucking metric in reality these are just like flashes in the pan once in a million situations that unfortunately labyrinth just can't really replicate on a grand scale and that's why labyrinth as soon as you know fire format started this deck just fell off the face of the earth so i'm gonna put this in rogue definitely has potential copium the new maid will save it now we got manidium remember when this deck was good remember when this deck was like basically like an ftk deck unfortunately you can't really play this deck anymore lost barone Lost Savage, basically kind of it. <laughs> yeah, you lost Marone and Savage. You lost two negates in a deck where you basically are just trying to build a board of as many negates as humanly possible. And even Barone was like a necessary extender in large quotations because you would like use Barone to pop Meek and stuff like that. There was a bunch of silly dumbass shit like that. There was a bunch of silly combos like that. Like why play Manadium when you could just play any other combo deck that ends on more interruptions? And if you wanted to play a hot red deck, just play fucking Centurion. Next up, we got Sprite. They're like a alien sprite variants there's like shifter sprite there's like colossus sprite with like the nemesis cards although sprite although it does have anti-meta builds that i do think it's very good at doing i think it's probably one of the worst anti-meta decks just because it feels very compromised it doesn't feel like you're playing an anti-meta deck it just feels like you're playing a bad sprite deck, if that makes sense. Like, you never feel good resolving Shifter in sprite. You don't feel good activating a fucking adventure token in sprite, you know what I mean? The fact that sprite has to be built in, like, this super fucky way, as well as the fact that it's not actually that good of a combo deck anymore, given the current, like, landscape. Unfortunately, I just don't think it's that good of a deck. I think it's, like, a rogue deck at best. It's probably one of the better rogue decks, but 
there are just too many things that Sprite kind of has to do in terms of like opening and, and its matchup pool that I think that Sprite just unfortunately just kind of falls on his face. Now we got Dragon Link. Actually, we're gonna pretend this is fucking Tenpai. This is the this is Tenpai, baby. Tier fucking one, baby. A thousand years of Mahjong. Show me those fucking tiles. I'm sitting at the South Wind dealer's seat, gonna make fucking three straights and a god pair. May God guide this fucking Typhon into a dim sum or whatever the fuck Bajan players say. Tenpai is just gonna be so fucking obnoxious, dude. There's so many tier 1.5, you mean 0.5? Oh yeah, whoops. <laughs> Tenpai is such an ignorant deck. And unless you're playing exactly like runic cards or you get lucky and you open like 500 hand traps, like you're just fucked. Tenpai is actually gambling because as a player going against Tenpai, you're either going to open the card that shuts down their whole fucking build a hand or they're going to run you over with 300,000 trillion damage. Firmly believe Tenpai, tier one, baby. A thousand years of Mahjong. Get it twisted. Sun Avalon. If it didn't see any success last format, what makes you think it's going to see success now? When fucking Sunsea Jess of all people gives up on this deck to play fire, that's how you know this deck is fucking horseshit. I'm sorry. Loses the hand traps. All of his starters are still at fucking one for some reason. Like dry ass and healer. Why are that why, why are those cards at one? That fucking sucks. You give it like 50 dry asses. As well as the fact that it loses to like every anti-meta option outside of like, I don't know, Sprite. <laughs> this deck is so bad. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but there's just too many fundamental issues with this deck. We truly are wilting in the flower beds with this one. Next up, we got Pearly. I mean, they got a delicious memory back. That's cool, I think. What does Pearly do? What does it do? Wow, I sit on a towers. You know what else can sit on towers? Like half the decks here. <laughs> I mean, Skull Guardian's basically a towers. The Sangen, the, the Sangen Biden Dragon's basically a towers. Argonauts are towers. Red MD's are towers. Lady Labyrinth's are towers. As funny as it is to say, there's so many decks now that just have inherent towers or cards that basically have infinite recursion. Like, Garudix is the towers. I'ma say this. You basically can never out that fucker. You out it by destruction one time, revives itself with Kirin. Out something else, revives itself by its own effect. Like, holy shit. Every deck in this format has so much recursion. It's obnoxious. I'm sorry, Pearly, but you're going in the don't category. It just ain't worth it. This is not a deck I want to get a twist it with. Cash Tira. It's so normal like who would have guessed that level seven beatdown is still a pretty good strategy like you could play it i don't think it's gonna be that good <laughs> if you want to play kashira you could definitely play like, the snake eyes kashira version in which case it might be like somewhere around like tier two or tier like 1.5 but i'd be like is that deck really a kashira deck or is it you know a snake eyes deck with kashira cards in it you tell me westward man Rain Raptor. This deck's pretty real. This deck's pretty good. You want to talk about towers? No deck does it like Raid Raptor does. This deck is like psycho terrorism. If you open bad versus Raid Raptor, like no hand traps, and they open even remotely playable, go next. There are so many two towers, and the third one is on the way. That's nuking your whole fucking board. You can out one towers, maybe. Maybe if you're lucky, you can out two with like the great Pyro Phoenix or whatever but you're not outing three. Raid Raptor, caca, bitch. Next up, we've got Pendulum. Although we got Kieran back, it's still Pendulum. I don't think I need to explain why Pendulum is a bad deck, but I will in about 30 seconds. If you, any of you guys are ever gonna be like, oh, but uh, Pendulum has like 10 million uh, extenders and like, beyond the Pendulum as uh, Among Us come and cock. Here's the main issue with Pendulum. Pendulum as an archetype, just as a whole, is extremely telegraphed in what it's trying to do in what it's trying to do like magic specter Nue is such an obvious play starter every child and their mom knows the fucking ash blossom or in permit and all of these super broken extenders like beyond the pendulum exceed the pendulum whatever although they're like super duper broken in their own right in a vacuum Unfortunately, just the way how the Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame has progressed with how decks are able to push through interaction or set up their own interaction or just play 5 trillion hand traps because we're in a super 18 to 21 hand trap format. Unfortunately, the odds are, just statistically, you're going to get double hand trap. And Pendulum, just for like the past couple years, is a deck that can't really play through hand trap formats. So that's why I'm putting Pendulum in the don't category. We've got Burn! This shit is so fucking ass. <laughs> You guys believed me for one millisecond. I was gonna put this shit in tier one. Bird is so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's technically a real death. 
I'm not saying it's a bad deck. I'm saying it's a, it's a penis deck. Burn is the definition of a penis deck. It is a penis deck because it only has stinky cheese. <laughs> Some post that a quote on Twitter or something. If a deck is comp if a deck's primary purpose is to cheese wins in a very stupid fashion, then that is what I call a penis deck. Now, penis decks aren't bad. Penis decks can be good. Um, in fact, Runic Stun is a good penis deck, or Fluanderies is a pretty decent penis deck. However, these aren't decks that aim to win by, you know, outskilling your opponent. These are decks that win by breaking your opponent down psychologically, like with Burn. <laughs> Burn is just way too variable of a deck to ever be anything above Rogue, unfortunately. That's just the reality. Exosister. We're just gonna put all the bad shifter decks right here. We've got Exosister, we've got Flu, we've got Thunder Dragon. That's gonna be its own thing, actually. And we've got Vanquish Soul. Exosister, don't play this shit. Flu, don't play this shit. Vanquish Soul, don't play this shit. These decks are so fucking mid in what they do. Like, sure, you can set up the fucking Burger King loop. You could maybe summon a Floodgate. You know what beats Floodgates? Fucking every card ever printed now. Fire King Kieran basically outs like 90% of these boards on its own. It's fucking crazy. As well as the fact that these decks are so fucking reliant on Shifter to beat actually good decks that if you try to put them in a head-to-head -head 1v1, you're fucked. You're, you're fucking cooked, baby. There's nothing you can do. There are so many decks that exist right now in the format that are basically carried by Shifter. And even then, those decks are still so bad. I'ma say it. I don't think Shifter's that good of a fucking card. Shifter is so fucking mid. Not because Shifter's a weak card or anything like that. But because in order to play Shifter, you have to play a bad deck. And if you're playing a bad deck, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be losing that match no matter what. So unfortunately, these three baddies are going into the bad tier. Now, we do have one interesting deck on the horizon, and that is Thunder Dragon. Now, Colossus is a very, very powerful card. Shifter is a very, very powerful card. Does that mean that Thunder Dragon is gonna be a meta contender? Well, let's look at the litmus test. If a deck's whole purpose is to end on like Colossus Seals and maybe a Titan, is that end board enough or better than Hot Red? Well, the answer is sometimes. I'ma say it. I think Thunder Dragon might be the best rogue deck. Bestial Thunder Dragon with like Shifter or a bunch of other random garbage like that. Like Shifter Thunder Dragon might actually be the best Shifter deck. Now, Colossus on its own, it's not enough to stop Fire King. I'm sorry. It's not enough to beat Snake Eye. There are just way too many ways to play around it. If you back it up with enough degen bullshit in the ways that these decks can't really, all of a sudden, this deck becomes a little bit better. <laughs> it becomes a little bit more swagalicious, one might say. This might be insane copium and the fact that Colossus shits on Runic Stun, but that I do think Colossus Turbo, aka Thunder Dragon, might actually be playable. Next up, we got Rescue Ace. This is the most tier two ass deck I've ever seen. It's just Snake, it's just Snake Eye, but worse. Awesome, still Snake Eye, still gonna play a DML Star package. Fuck it, we ball. Salaman, great. <sighs> Don't play this deck. Lose the Shifter, lose the Hand Traps, lose to any Board Breaker, lose to like 50 other cards. Don't play this deck. If you wanna play good fire deck, play one of these. Striker. Oh man. <laughs> if you wanna play a deck with infinite resource loops, play fire deck, play voiceless. The main reason why Striker is just so not good anymore is because Striker's recursion at the time was unparalleled. You had Kagari add back and you knew you were never really dying because you could float into Ray and you could float into Kaina and maybe blank one or two attacks. And then you had like double engage follow-up plus whatever you had set. You could draw like 500 cards. You had a bunch of hand traps as backup. You were basically chilling. Unfortunately, the way Yu-Gi-Oh has progressed over the past four to six years, this sort of gameplay is just no longer as good because every other deck is capable of setting up infinite recursion plays. Like look at Fire King Snake Eye. Is like Fire King Snake Eye is is like the fucking ultimate apex example of decks with infinite recursion and infinite future plays because every car loops into itself and recycles itself it's crazy look at runic look at runic where the just the field spell itself is like engage on like turbo steroids unfortunately just the reality is striker's main selling point is no longer relevant in a sea of decks that just do what it does but with a bunch of bonus effects like you know setting up four fucking negates and pops unfortunately striker's not that good.
but in the dope category. If my girl and Moye be drowning, you can catch me revealing a worm from my hand because I'm going to be summoning that Sword Soul token. We got Sword Soul. They got Protos. And now we get to employ the hot red litmus test yet again. Is Sword Soul with Protos and Chi Shell and the other fucker, the, the evil long one, whatever. Is this deck good if it could set up that board? The answer is yes. Now, the second part of the litmus test. Are you going to realistically set up that board? Unfortunately, no. The litmus test has two parts. The first part is you actually have to set up the fucking combo. And the second part is you better pray that combo is enough to get you there. And unfortunately, Sword Soul, although it can make the combo relatively easily. I mean, like, all it takes is, like, one Moe and a dream. The reality is that Sword Soul is a deck that's so susceptible to hand traps, it's not even funny. I'm not even joking. You could say, you could, you have one Ash Blossom and like four normal summons in your hand. And if you just save Ash Blossom for the emergence that they're gonna search off the Chi Shell, you just fucking win. <laughs> like nothing your opponent could do because they can't even end on Barone to insulate their Chi Shell anymore. Like this deck just became so much worse after the Barone ban, as well as the fact that, again, hyper hand trap format. This deck was already losing in a format when it got released where there was like six to nine hand traps in the main, like Valor, Imperm, Ash. And now you're gonna tell me that this deck's gonna be good in a format with fucking and Nibiru and Gamma and everyone riding around. Like, hell no. I'm sorry, Sword Soul, but you're just not cooking. I'm gonna have to let you drown and save my girl. Next up, we got Tier Limit. Every fucking Twitter Andy's favorite deck. I'm not even joking. You go on Twitter right now, you look at any fucking Yu-Gi-Oh personality who's a professional yapper with dog shit takes and zero tops. You ask them about Tier Limit, they fucking love this deck. The only people who like Tier Limit are Twitter yappers or actual psychopathic pro players. Now, hear me out. In a format of Fire King Snake Eye, which is probably going to be the most dominant deck going forward, uh, and Snake Eye Pure might probably fall off, but I'm just on Copium right now. Tier Limit plays so well into that board because you're no longer losing to like Barone. You're no longer losing to Borlode Savage. You're no longer losing to like IPSP as much. I mean, you still kind of are, but you know, it's not the point. Like if your opponent wants to pop your fucking cards or your special summon monster, be my fucking guest, dog. <laughs> Have you read a tier limit card? This shit's insane. There's so many just powerful engines tier limit can play, like like Triple Mally, the Horus cards, the Nemesis cards, by the way. Did you guys know Sprint can send any level two? Step one, Sprint send Nemesis flag. Step two, make princess, revive flag. Flag add corridor. Link the, link the two into like Amblo Whale or whatever the fuck. Summon Corridor by returning a banished Mali or a banished Trivakarma or fucking t any one of your banished 10 trillion cards. Make Colossus, make Protos. Fuck it, we ball. Tier Limit combo boards are still some of the most just disgustingly insane things of all time. I think that Tier Limit's matchup into Fire Decks is gonna be extremely potent and it might actually see some pretty decent success this format. I'm a believer. You got Orcist. You wanna play a graveyard deck, play Fire. That's the easy answer. Like, what does Orcus do? Wow, I normal summon Armageddon Knight in 2024. Wicked. Unchained. This deck was so cool for like five minutes. <laughs> this deck got banned way too fucking early. I wasn't the biggest fan of Unchained, but even I could recognize like, holy shit, this deck was around for like 10 minutes. Like, what happened? <laughs> One Shavara, deck is super inconsistent, and the board that it ends on now just doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> like, Unchained was amazing in the format where it was like tier one, just because it had an amazing matchup into everything, as well as the fact that it had like a ton of recursion, and it's bored at the time, although it's fucking dog shit now, it was really, really good back then. Now, not really that relevant anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Just everything Unchained could do is just so irrelevant now. It's, it's crazy. Like, they fucking took this deck to the fucking back, fucking shot it in the head like 12 times. And 11 of those shells were just good decks being made. Just why you bell is a thousand times better. I'm gonna be real. When Nats comes around and Fiendbox comes out, Fiendbox is gonna be like tier 0 0.5. It might actually be tier 0. That shit is so dementedly broken. I've been seeing so many Fiendbox, you bell combos. Oh my god, that shit is actively a war crime. Until we get those cards, uh, don't save your breath. And finally, the best deck of the format Runic Stun. I might be on the strongest fucking drugs imaginable of Copium. And it might be because I own this deck in max rarity. Ulti dualities and all. I think this deck might be 0.5. I think it's definitely fucking worse than fire. Don't get me fucking wrong. But I think runic stun might actually be the second best deck. I'm not even joking. Tell me one deck on this list that this deck has a losing matchup. I'm not saying a bad matchup. I'm not saying a weak matchup. 
I'm saying a losing matchup. Spoilers, there's exactly one, and it's called the dice roll. And, and voiceless voice, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> Runic fucking shits on everything. <laughs> it's not even funny. The floodgates you're able to set up are just so fucking obnoxious to deal with if you're playing anything relevant right now, because there's basically just no counterplay to it. There's nothing you could do. Like, what does Fire King do against rivalry? What does Voiceless do against rivalry? What does Senpai do against there could be only one? What does half of the shit do against the other half of the shit? It's bananas. I've been saying this. Runic Tuzer. Hey, God bless America. God bless our troops. And let's get ready to activate tip to add. But yeah, that's the completed tier list. I'm sorry for anyone who's not ready to hear it, but this is the official new deck tier list. And I refuse to believe otherwise. You cannot convince me because I only speak truth. Anyways, let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts on this tier list were and why people who play Runic Stun deserve the death penalty. And yeah, it's gonna be it for this video.